In this lecture, we are going to learn about biasing of MOSFETs. We saw in the last lecture that a MOSFET can be used as an amplifier and the way that is done is by choosing a bias point. So we choose a bias point, let's say Q as shown in this figure. Now around this bias point, we give a time varying signal. This small signal around the bias point is amplified by the amplifier and the output is shown as in the graph. The voltage gain is given by the equation as shown in the figure. So, by, so to use a MOSFET as an amplifier, we need to bias the amplifier. How do we achieve this biasing? The simplest way to do that is to fix the gate source voltage as we did in the last lecture. Now we know that the drain current is given by the equation on the screen. The drain current depends on the gate source voltage but it also depends on the constants say the capacitance of the oxide layer, the aspect ratio and the threshold voltage and these constants can, wide, can vary widely among different MOSFETs of the same type. Also, the threshold voltage and the conductivity of the semiconductor uh, varies with temperature quite a lot. So in this graph, you can see that uh, we have two devices which are of the same type However, there is a variation in the drain current for the same gate source voltage applied to the devices. Now, if we use these two devices in a similar circuit, we will have completely different results. And that is not a good uh, thing to happen because we want our circuit to function similarly when we make it from different devices of the same type. So using the fixed VGS doesn't seem to be a good solution because with varying parameters in the same type of MOSFETs you get different outputs. So we need to have a kind of biasing that would overcome this problem and also the problem of having variation with temperature. So is it possible to have a biasing scheme that would overcome these problems? That is what we are going to discuss in this lecture. One excellent way of biasing the MOSFET is to have a constant gate voltage and add a source resistance. Of course, if you write the equation for the gate voltage, you would see that the gate voltage is the sum of the gate source voltage, VGS, and the drop across the resistance RS, which will be RS into the drain current. The drain current, of course, can vary depending on the parameters of the MOSFET as we saw before. Now if the drain current increases a little bit for a particular VGS, um, because the gate voltage is constant, VGS would have to reduce for an increased ID. And when VGS reduces, the drain current becomes, const uh, becomes constant. So the source resistance actually starts to act like a feedback resistance here. This feedback uh, action of the source resistance leads to its name and it's usually called the degeneration resistance. This is the curve that we saw before also for device 1 and device 2 with a fixed VGS. In this case we are showing the variation in the drain current for a, the fixed gate voltage with the source resistance. You can see that ID1 and ID2 are very close to each other even though VGS1 and VGS2 are changing quite a lot. Uh, depending on the slope resistance, the change in the currents can be very small or very large. If you choose a large value of the resistance, the slope becomes almost equal to zero and ID1 and ID2 become almost same, which essentially tells us that 
for this kind of a biasing system to have the drain current insensitive to parameter variations we need to have the source resistance very large now the practical way of using this kind of biasing scheme is to generate vg from the power supply that has already been given to us and one way to do that is to just make a voltage divider and because the gate current is zero this voltage divider works perfectly well in this circuit we would like to choose the resistances at the gate to be very high so as to give a high input impedance to the uh, ac signal that we are going to couple to this uh, biased mosfet we would like the drain resistance to be very high because we want a large gain however the drain resistance should not be so high that the output signal or the mosfet actually goes into goes out of the saturation region goes into either the cutoff or the uh, triode region we would uh, want to choose the source resistance to be very large so as to prevent changes due to parameter variations to this circuit that has been biased we add a ac signal through a large capacitor the capacitor value needs to be chosen such that it acts like a short circuit for every frequency that is contained in the input another practical implementation of this biasing scheme using the source resistance is when we have a dual supply in this case what we can do is just connect a gate resistance a resistance to the gate instead of a voltage divider at the gate the gate resistance is connected so that the gate resistance provides a high input impedance to the ac circuit that is connected to the biased mosfet another way of biasing the circuit is to bias the mosfet by using a drain to gate feedback resistor we can see in this configuration there will be no current flowing through the resistance connected between the drain and the gate and therefore the gate voltage and the drain voltage would be the same as is written in the equation so vds will be equal to vds and vds will be equal to vdd minus the drain resistance into the drain current we can manipulate the equation a little bit to get this equation where vdd which is a constant is equal to vd plus rd into the drain current this equation is very similar to the equation that we got in the previous case where the gate voltage which was a constant was equal to vgs plus rs into the drain current now we can see that if due to some parameter variations the drain current increases because vdd is a constant we will have a decrease in vds which in turn decreases the drain current so the resistance rd that is the drain resistance acts like a feed, a negative feedback to stabilize the drain current and hence this biasing scheme is a good scheme one way of course to uh, bias the transistor is to use a constant current source in this case the drain current becomes invariant to the gate source voltage and to any parameter variations in the mosfet and therefore this is a great scheme however we'll have to figure out how to make a constant current source we discussed this circuit in one of the exercises in the previous class this is a current mirror and the current that is set up by the mosfet q1 flows the same value of current also flows in the mosfet q2 so we have uh, this circuit where the constant the current mirror replaces the constant current source and biases the mosfet the current in the current mirror is decided by the circuit connected to mosfet q1 here so in summary we have uh, different biasing schemes we have the fixed uh, gate source voltage biasing 
However, we saw that this biasing scheme is not good because it is the drain current there is too much dependent on uh, the parameters of individual MOSFETs, which may vary even in the same batch of MOSFETs. Therefore, we have the other three schemes which try to minimize this dependence on MOSFET parameters. Uh, the biasing schemes are fixed uh, gate voltage with source resistance, or we can bias the MOSFET with a gate to drain resistor or using the constant current source. So we will stop here and we will solve some problems in the class to understand these biasing schemes a little better. I would uh, suggest that you get your uh, calculators to the class so that while we solve problems you can do the numerics easily. See you.